sometimes you have moments in chess where you just can't believe that something happened. And um, I had one of those moments just recently. Without risking spoiling it, I'll just say that you don't see something like this very often, especially at the 21, 2200 level. So I hope you guys enjoy this game. All right, so this was a 10 minute game and this was at the end of a long work week. I had no business even really playing this game. I was super tired. I, I should just not have been playing chess, but I decided to play this one anyway. And you're gonna see what I mean real quickly here. So already I have no idea what this opening is. It started as a Grunfeld and then it kind of turned into some sort of weird Scandinavian where they've got this Fianchetto bishop over here. And I, yeah, I don't even really know. So I just put the queen over there on a5 because that's what you do in Scandinavian a lot of times. Went ahead and did this and you're going to see what I was talking about right here. This is not really a great move, I don't think. I don't think that's where the queen really belongs. But I wanted to get out of the discovered attack, so I just put it over there. And then queen d2, uh, probably most of you are noticing that's a pretty obvious attack on the h6 pawn. I had no idea. Like I said, I was really tired. I was, I think I was multitasking at the same time. I was doing something else while I was playing this. And anyway, I just played bishop e6 and then didn't even realize until after he took that my pawn was even under attack. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to keep developing. And at least, if nothing else, I have an open H file. Maybe I can put my rooks over there and checkmate the guy or something, right? So, uh, but he played E4, nice move, just taking over the center and started pushing pushing my pieces around here. I hopped to D5. The knight comes in, and I'm already, like, pretty much losing. Um, that's a bad move as well. I just gave away another pawn. I'm just kind of giving away my pawns. All over the place. Uh, I played e6, which yes, it deals with this, but it creates a massive hole here. And after this, the knight is ready to go. The queen is about to come in. I'm I'm really in a bad situation. Um, so I played queen c6, rook here. I was trying to potentially bring the rook over. Rook comes over, queen comes here, knight comes in. This is like a triple fork. I don't really want to take the knight but I have to take the knight because otherwise I'm losing some major pieces. So I took it and the queen comes in. Okay, and at this point, I, I remember thinking like, should I just resign and like go home and, and stop playing chess? And I'm like, well, okay, we'll play a few more moves. So I played king e8 and sure enough, the other rook is coming in. This one's coming over. It, it's really bad, okay? I took the pawn, rook comes over. And here I'm thinking, all right, it looks like I'm getting checkmated. The rook's coming down. If I take, they take. And after I move here, that's just checkmate, right? So I'm thinking, is there any way to stop this? You know, I can bring the queen back. Looks really bad. Maybe I can bring the rook over somewhere and try to survive also looks pretty bad. And then I got a crazy idea. And I went ahead and played king here, which is not, not a good move. But my idea was that somehow, maybe after this happens and a bunch of checks, my king can like run up the board and potentially hide somewhere over here, okay? I know, crazy idea, but watch this. So instead of taking right away, which I think was a little better, the guy brings the rook in first, which, okay, still pretty good. I went here, and what this move does is it forces the rook to capture and not the queen, right? Because if the queen captures, then I can just take it with the rook. So rook has to take, okay, fine. So my king starts to go up, and I still had visions of, of this little maneuver, right? And of course, you know, there's probably a way that white can stop it, but I was like, I have nothing better to do, so I'm moving the king there. H4, sure enough. King g4, and right here, my opponent actually missed the win, okay? Well, this is one time. Uh, they took on g6, and I'll give you a second if you want to pause. What should white play here to win the game? Well, if you're ready to see the answer, it's actually rook takes f5, and the point is that this pawn is pinned, so I can't take it that way. So I have to take back this way if I want to take the rook, but if I do, queen takes g6 check, I have to like run over here and I'm actually getting mated in eight moves. If you're curious, it's queen here. I have to block with the queen. Queen goes to d3. Queen to f4 is the best move for me. If I play something else like, I, I mean, this is the immediate threat checkmate, right? So if I like, let's just say go back here, to try to open up a space. Then there's rook c4, which cuts it off. Again, this is the threat. And the only thing I can do is give up my queen and I'm still getting mated in three moves. So. That's, uh, you know, what was happening there. Okay. My opponent did not see that move. Did not see that and played queen takes g6. Okay, fine. So now my king actually gets to h3 like I was, was hoping for. And this, as scary as it looks, it's actually really safe for me. Because these pawns are like a shield, right? Because queen can't go through, you know, the own, your own color pawns. 
So this queen is kind of like, how do I get to the king now? Same thing with the rook, right? I'm like totally shielded from all different files here. And this diagonal is kind of covered right now. Um, so it's pretty amazing. This guy took, and now I had a cool move. Again, if you want to pause, uh, what do you think I played here? This was, a, was actually a really nice move. I'll give you a second to figure that out. Well, the move is queen to e4. And the point here is that I don't even care about this rook and where it moves because I'm threatening checkmate in one move. That, that's the immediate threat. The only way this rook can stop that would be to go here and then I'm, I could take it or I actually could just take the queen, which is better. Um, so that's the threat. And, you know, I can take this rook later, right? So king to f1, really the only move. Uh, I think that's the only move. Let me see if there's... Yeah, king f1, only move. And now I had a perpetual check at, at the worst. I could just like start throwing these checks and white's actually not able to get out of these perpetual checks. So uh, first I actually took this, which is a mistake. I should have just went for the check, but I thought that maybe I could like bring my rook over and try to win. And one thing that I want you to notice is the time. Okay, so if we go back here a couple moves, right here, uh, as soon as I played king h3, um, that's when my opponent kind of realized, let me get rid of some of these squares. Um, that's when my opponent realized they're like, okay, I don't actually have anything anymore. And you notice they had four minutes and then they thought all the way down to 135. Okay, that's important. And you're gonna see that in Y in just a second. So here we go, 40 seconds down my opponent has, okay. So I capture this and I'm not really even worried about the clock here. I'm just kind of thinking I'm in a good position. 17 seconds, so my opponent has 17 seconds. I'm like, okay, I am I think I'm just winning. So I went here, went back a couple times, went here. And then I decided, to bring the rook over, which actually was a big mistake. I didn't realize it at the time, big mistake. Now, but my opponent has 14 seconds, okay? They played queen h5, which um, not the best, actually was it? Yeah, that is the best one, that is the best one. So queen h5 was fine. Um, controlling this diagonal to stop my queen from coming like to f3, this is covered. Uh, now I could drop back here uh, to threaten this and actually, what I noticed in this position was that my opponent, first of all, has 1.4 seconds. So I'm like, okay, they're gonna run out of time, like probably this move or the next move. I'll just play anything. And my thought process was like I just said, eh, queen d5, I'll go for the checkmate again. You know, why not? So I played queen d5. And I will let you take a look at the position and tell me what do you notice white can do? Well, for those of you who saw this little guy here, uh, yeah, that's actually checkmate in one move. It's just just mate. I just can't move anywhere. Everything is protected, and uh, that's that's game over. But my opponent had 1.4 seconds. So uh, I will let you put it in the comments if you think that I lost this game or won this game. And then after you write your comment, I'll tell you what happened. Did you do it? Okay. So I played this move, and as soon as I played it, um, I kind of had this moment of like, wait a second, was that a mistake? And then while I was having that moment, my opponent ran out of time, and I won the game. And you know, a little thing pops up, you you won the game. And then I went back and looked at it, and I'm like, yeah, sure enough, that's that's checkmate, that's mate and one. I just completely threw the game. Like I could, I could play almost any other move here. Like any move that doesn't just get me mated, right? As long as I, my queen defends the pawn. So uh, I just just thought this game was like the craziest thing because, you know, putting myself in the opponent's shoes, this has to be extremely frustrating. Like if your opponent plays this move and you have one second left, he, pr he probably wasn't expecting it, right? Like wasn't expecting me to just play like the worst move on the board. But if you would have pre-moved this, mm, that would have been a sad end to this game. Anyway, uh, I wanted to share that with you guys and um, hopefully you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Stay sharp, play smart, take care.